Cause we're the crazy Cause we're the crazy Cause we're the crazy Crazy Hope you are having the time of your life But think twice my only advice Come on now, who do you Who do you, who do you, who do you Think you are Stay tuned so you'll be more informed Viewers shows for you Cause we're the crazy Cause we're the crazy Cause we're the crazy Crazy Cause we're the crazy Cause we're the crazy Cause we're the crazy Crazy Well hello there, my name is Reagan McGinty and this is Crazy A. On a serious note, a form of bullying brought through today's technology. Here to talk about cyberbullying with me is Savannah Gosling, a team sports coordinator for the youth as well as Rachel Summerholder, a volunteer at Thousand Waves Self-Defense Program. Both are high school teachers here. Welcome to my round table. So what's up this? Teens are too afraid to tell people how they feel face to face? Well, bullying someone through Facebook, email, IMing, texting, or any sort of technology is an almost guaranteed way to hurt someone. For instance, on December 12, 2012, a young teenage girl committed suicide. I believe her name was Jessica Lane. Yeah, she was 16 and told throughout a website called Formspring, which was kind of known back then, but not as much anymore, um, that she was called all these names and weren't very pleasant. There were things that were being sent to her, like, nobody even cares about you, can you kill yourself? And to your earlier comment, I agree. Besides, there are about 300 students that are bullied and 100,000 students that are cyber bullied and which causes a serious problem. And here's the clip. A new virus, unlike any other, has infiltrated schools through social media. A pandemic quickly spreading around the world. Its origin is yet to be known. However, individuals with a history of negative and violent home susceptible to contraction. Yes, I have the statistics right here. 200 and 292,000 students are bullied per year. It may seem very little, but that's still quite a lot of people. Savannah, do you think that since you work with children and sports, does being cyberbully show in their athletics? Like, are they still as outgoing and successful? Personally, I do believe so. When someone is being bullied, there are typically witnesses that you can rely on, but when someone is cyberbullied, it is technically impossible that no one would know. Um, as far as what you were saying before, there are warning signs that also can show that confidence is lowered, which later on grades decrease very rapidly. <coughs> and as well as showing, harm, showing interest in harming themselves. I've seen these signs in several of the students at Thousand Ways, because that's one of the reasons that drive them to the, upper, to the corporation, that they feel oppressed. Um, suicide is the third leading cause of death among young people, which results in almost 4,500 deaths per year. Then the thought of suicide is over 14% of high school students, while 7% have actually attempted it. Girls between the ages of, say, 10 to 15, are more likely to be affected by this way of torment, which therefore they are at higher risk for suicide. And what are ways as teachers that you can indicate that a child is being a victim of cyberbullying? Well, there's more anxiety and the student tends to withdraw from the social activities and typically wishes just to avoid school altogether. Also, with what um, she said, <coughs> a lot of the students that are being cyberbullied show um, signs of being sad or moody, and especially being after after being online and on their computers, or even now on devices which are very accessible to 
kids and students and even older people and text messages or videos and stuff like that. So I understand that this affects them socially, but does it have any impact on the child at home or academically? Yes, Raiden. I mean, the child would be the same at home as they are at school. They would be upset, moody, uninterested, anxious. They would prefer to just be alone, doing something that doesn't involve being with anyone or near anyone. I mean, what do you think, Savannah? I completely agree. As far as schoolwork, their lack of interest um, tends to cause their grades to slowly decrease, like I said before, and rapidly decline, which doesn't do so well for the student, but obviously colleges won't listen to that. That's more of your personal thing. So it's very hard for these kids. I would imagine that being told um, you were stupid and aren't worth anything, that it, you kind of begin to believe that. It's kind of like a movie I saw the other night with my daughter called Cyberbully. It felt very realistic and gave me a really good insight into cyberbullying. I know which movie you're talking about. Um, you're right. It does feel very real because that could happen to anyone, and that's scary, but it's the reality. And the message is very clear inside that movie, which makes it so realistic. And the message is very direct, so we know that when someone watches that message, is that message is received. And that means that it won't just go in one ear and out the other. Well, thank you for that amazing insight. Thank you to our special guests as well, Savannah Gosling and Rachel Summerholder, for teaching us more about cyberbullying. I'm Reagan McGinty. Thank you for watching. Crazy 8 will be right back after a commercial break. <laughs> This is uh, segment two of the uh, Crazy Eight Talk Show. We're gonna, uh, I'm Issei, I'm, I'm going to be the host for the segment. This is Sarah, and she is uh, the guest, uh, our first guest for this uh, segment. She's a, a St. Benedict student, she goes to St. Benedict High School, and she's a sophomore. She is uh, passionate about history, and she has a huge interest in uh, the current world political affairs. And today we're going to be discussing about the war in Syria. Uh, we all know that current uh, that the war in Syria lasted two years, and uh, this two-year-long conflict has uh, caused uh, uh, a lot of bloodshed. Uh, according to the UN, 100,000 people died, and thousand other uh, hundred thousands uh, displaced. And uh, currently, uh, there have been a chemical attack outside of Damascus, in which uh, uh, over a thousand people died. And the U.S. has accused, uh, uh, has blamed it on the Assad government. Now the U.S. is considering a military strike on Syria, and uh, there has been a huge debate whether we should attack uh, or not uh, on Syria. So uh, I'm going to start with you by asking you, do you think we should intervene uh, on the war in Syria, or do you, sh do you think we should be involved? In? Well, the war in Syria, I mean, it's a very serious matter, for sure. Um, in terms of U.S. Inter intervention, I'm kind 
<coughs> yes and no. And the reason why I say that is because, um, yes, the Ashad um, regime has used chemical weapons on innocent people, and that is against international law. I mean, that is just against humanity as a whole. It's very unfair to people. And um, I know the U.S. plan of attack, what they're going to do is first they're going to try to um, have dip uh, diplomatic measures. They're going to try to, um, I guess, compromise with um, the leader over in Syria. And I know President Obama is also working with Putin. And Putin, who is the president of Russia, is actually um, allies with Syria as well. Um, I'd say U.S. Uh, U.S. militaristic intervention will only be necessary if they deny the, what we are requesting, and then the U.S. will send over drone strikes to try to destroy the factories of which the chemicals are made. Um, I guess personally, I don't think we should get involved. Um, I don't get why we can't just have the other countries of the United Nations you know, deal with it because we have our own worries to, tr to work. We have our own worries to worry about, especially in terms of like you know improving the American economy. And I think we should focus on that. Thank you for uh, giving up uh, your precious time. It's a pleasure, and I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you for sharing with the audience. Uh, with the audience, uh, the. Uh, your information with your ideas. Yeah, of course. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Crazy Eight Talk Show. This is segment two. Today, our second uh, guest is Cameron Rich. He's a student of uh, St. Benedict. He's a senior. And he was uh, currently following the situation in Syria by watching uh, the news. We all know that uh, President Obama has currently made his speech his public speech on the war of Syria and uh, we all know that President Obama chose to take a diplomatic path rather a, a war path so he, uh, President Obama has uh, currently dismissed his uh, uh, idea of uh, getting involved in war however he, uh, he will use uh, the threat of war if the diplomatic uh, talks fail so considering President Obama's speech do you think the United States should intervene in the war in Syria? Uh, I believe uh, yep, clearly a lot has developed uh, since the initial conflict took place uh, a couple weeks ago or earlier this month. Um, but my view on it, I guess, uh, would be kind of balanced, kind of, kind of the way that President Obama approached it. Uh, he his speech basically outlined that his intentions are to preserve uh, the rights of the Syrian people, but at the same time, you know, he's conscious and aware of not intervening too much to not have this turn out like another huge Middle Eastern conflict, like the events that happened after 9/11 um, and the Afghanistan War and the Iraq War. Um, so I would definitely say that, you know. As crucial as it is to with, withhold the, or I guess uh, suspend the, no, I'm wrong. <coughs> uh, as much as, as important as it is to uphold the rights of the Syrian people, it is also crucial not to intervene to the point where you know the the safety of U.S. soldiers are at stake, uh, the lives of more Syrian people are put at risk. Uh, it, it's, it's very important. It's a delicate situation, and it's absolutely fundamental for uh, this, this moment to be taken with, you know, logical and pro proactive steps to, to really, you know, handle this in the best way possible. Thank you for sharing your ideas Thank you for inviting me on the show And uh, for uh, spending part of your precious time with us And sharing your ideas with the audience Thank you Hi everybody, welcome back to the second segment of the Crazy Eight Talk Show 
Uh, here we have our third and last uh, guest, Ms. Hershey. She's a teacher at St. Benedict and she teaches the AP US history. We recently know that uh, the, United, the European Union has rejected the US proposal on the Syrian war. And uh, we know that the Russians and the uh, Americans have reached an agreement on the Syrian uh, chemical weapons. So, Ms. Hershey, I would like uh, to start by asking you, do you think uh, the United States should intervene or get involved in the Syrian war? Um, well, I think that it was right for the United States to wait for the UN investigation to come back and find the results of that. And I think that it's important that the U.S. work with the UN when dealing with the situation. And if we get involved in the war, because of the United Nations approval or because of uh, some other reasons. Do you think this work is going to affect the US economy? Absolutely. Um, I think that the United States should have limited involvement in the conflict in Syria. I don't think that the United States should start an attack in Syria. I think that minimal effort will be best. Uh, they should, in my opinion, focus on the humanitarian aspects and human dignity and human rights. So, what if uh, uh, Obama intervenes without uh, the mandate of the United Nations and uh, he says that he's going to go to war because the diplomatic path fails? Do we violate uh, the international laws in that case? I think that you could argue that the United States would be violating international laws. Um, I know that the United States is trying to make the world safer by uh, preventing Assad's use of chemical weapons in the future. In my opinion, it's most important to um, get Assad to agree to giving up his chemical weapons and dismantling them so that he can't use them in the future. So I think that's the most important goal the United States should have. All right, then. Thank you, Ms. Hersey, for uh, sharing your idea with us, for spending the part of your precious time with us and sharing your ideas with the audience. I really uh, like to thank you, and uh, I would like to thank you uh, in the name of the audience, in my name. Thank you a lot. Thank you very much. The war on Syria is a very important issue to the world because many nations around the world have many interests in Syria. According to our statistics, on average, 88% of the St. Benedict High Schoolers know about the war in Syria, while 90% are against the US involvement in Syria. We presented you this talk show because it is important for you to know what happens around the world. It is important for you to, uh, to know the politics, the culture, and the uh, language of a country which is way different from the United States. It is important for you that you read newspapers, that you watch news and you follow news. Knowledge is power. Nobody can take it from you. Thank you for uh, watching our talk show. Uh,